Welcome in, everybody. Welcome in. Hello, Bro, big <laughs> we have no idea how to start. <laughs> no. I think every time that we've started, we don't know how to start, but that's okay. I mean, we're human, so we're not robots. Welcome. Welcome to Grow Big TV. We got a great live today talking about Brussels sprouts, talking about contest. And uh, yeah, we got Jujujujujujujujubi segment. And did you know, no Dr. Paula Ruffin today, but uh, she'll be back next week. Uh, life matters, you know, <laughs> you got things to do in life. And I always tell her, you got to do you first before you do us. So, but I appreciate all our time. Uh, let's see who's in the chat. We got Ginger Ninja, Camp Patton Family Compound, and Gil just uh, had to do something quick. Let's see who else is here. We got Purple Tea Bear, Tammy Peach, and I probably said that wrong, but we'll get it after a little while. We got uh, David Gray, Built on a Rock Homestead, Susan Goulet, Kathleen Moran. Thank you guys all for coming on in. If I missed you there, Mike, Mike's here. And I'm never going to get, I always say chaotic, chaotic, whatever. <laughs> it's Mike. You know who you are. <laughs> anyway, I love, I love how he's grown all his food inside and what he does. And there's Bill. Welcome in, Bill. Happy, good to see you. And there's Happy Mac. Like the fruit, peach. It's Tammy Peach. There we go. That's easy to remember. We got you, Tammy. We got you. It's good to see you here. So people are starting to roll on in. I'm going to start our video right off the bat of six inches of soil. I like showing it. I just think it's very important. And uh, there's so much that we have to learn about the soil. And so I'm going to play that right now before we start. And hopefully you guys like this. Six inches of soil feeds eight billion people. We already grow enough of all the human essential nutrients to feed everyone in life. Farming is the single biggest cause of biodiversity collapse, the second biggest cause of climate change. Soil is the most valuable resource on the planet, and we're degrading it without even realizing. We have come to believe that money is more important than soil. That idea has to change. Regenerative agriculture is farming, that we're producing food, but also farming in harmony with nature. You're working with nature against it. The more people see it, the more that they realize that it works. Having a regenerative agroecological system, that is surely the solution. Soils are absolutely phenomenal in the amount of carbon they can store. What we absolutely need now is urgent action from the government. Until you deal with nine retailers who have 94.5% of food sales in Britain, you're not going to have a level playing field. Consumers have a choice. They can decide to buy cheap meat from industrial farms, or they can find farmers that really value animal welfare and the environment that we're farming in. Dad started Regen Farming for the future generations to come, and that was the most selfless act he could have done. The people who are doing this are making big sacrifices. I think the potential is absolutely huge here. These farms really can change the world. It's all about the soil, isn't it, really? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. 4 one twenty-four. Right around a corner. That's amazing. I welcome in Misha Lee, becoming a green stalker. Robert Gopher. <laughs> we say the guy that's going to say something else. I love her name. We got Deborah Richardson's here. Welcome in, everyone. Kim Kimberly Gaia. Hello, Deborah Richardson. Reporting now, live. <laughs> I can see her definitely as a broadcaster. Oh, for sure. Without a doubt. 100 perfect. 100 percent perfect <laughs> name. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Welcome in D's Garden Adventures. Let's see who else. Well, welcome in, guys. You know what? Since we're off to that video, there's 24 people that just came in. Thank you, guys. I want to show you another video. I've been talking about Matt Powers 
that powers a lot. Well, he has something very special going on starting next week. Uh, I'm taking his classes, and uh, it's amazing how many professors and uh, master gardeners are coming in and doing his classes. It's absolutely, it's it's awesome. Um, so I want to show you a quick video of his. It's just a quick one minute introduction. This is Matt Powers. Look at that video still. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. <laughs> Five days, over 45 speakers, live panel giveaway, sign up. So this is Matt Powers uh, site right here. Matt Powers, regener Regenerative Soil and Permaculture. And uh, his link is down here below. So sign up. You have to sign up for the conference. It is a conference, guys. So this is Matt Powers. Let's see what he has to say. Five days of giveaways, live training from all over the world, joining together to share a pathway. There's ranchers. There's people making products. There's people doing things online, people in person. It's giveaways all five days and over 50 different opportunities to get something amazing. There's thousands of dollars of giveaways. So there's going to be large courses. There's going to be physical books. There's going to be everything under the sun. It's free for the week. And the replays, I even give you time to go through the replays of the live sessions. So make sure you have a fresh journal, you've cleared your calendar, and that you're ready to dive deep into our future. Join us this January. Sign up today. Click the link below. I'm so excited. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. I'll see you in there. So just let you guys know, some people that's speaking, we're hoping to have them on our show because we're grown big. <laughs> um, I love to interview him. He's so smart. Uh, we plan, we are going to have him on our show. It just, uh, we just got to work out a schedule for it. So uh, amazing story. Amazing guy. Um, imagine going from a life where you have everything. You're part of a band. He's part of this. And then also, he also has Crohn's disease. His wife went through cancer. There's just so oh, many I issues. I didn't know he had Crohn's disease. Wow. Yeah. So he had to totally change his life around and his family life around. So he totally, so, you know, went out west, started trying to form a whole new life. There's a whole story to it. Um, and, uh, yeah, amazing, amazing story. That's going to be another great live. Uh, coming up sometime this spring. Um, just let you guys know, I, I need to know some things. We're going to have a hot dog eating contest. Hot dog not eating. part of that, but I will be <laughs> judging it. <laughs> and there's going to be a prize to that. And it's going to be, uh, you would have five minutes, eight hot dogs. The fastest to win has to eat eight hot dogs. But there's only a five limit, five minute time limit. So that's how we're going to do it. It's going to be individual instead of everybody at one time. What, Green Soccer, you don't want to be our number one hot dog eating champion? Is that what I just read? <laughs> and this is for the Thursday before the Super Bowl. So if you are interested, we'll have a nice prize for you. And uh, I think it'll be pretty funny to do this before the Super Bowl. And I'm not asking you to eat like 67 hot dogs like uh, the guy did in the summer. <laughs> We're just That's disgusting. Eat, We're just asking you to eat 50. <laughs> <laughs> just have to eat 50. That, there's nothing wrong with that. You got to have the works on a hot dog, too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be very simple, as simple as we can. Thursday, hot dog eating contest. You go. Max of hot dogs you have to eat is eight, but if you don't make it eight, we don't care. It's for the fun of the show, and we're looking for contestants, so that's important. So uh, we didn't know if there's any contestants out there, but the, the more contestants, the bigger the prize. The less contestants, the less of the prize. So hopefully you guys can enter. Um, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you guys, we're going to make a video soon to sign up, and but if you already have interest, please let us know. I don't want to be I don't want to do give out a pretty good prize when there's only going to be two people entered. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I want to make sure this is fun for the Super Bowl. Another contest we're going to have, we still got to figure out a finished name with it, but it's like uh, 
Who's going to be a... The concept is kind of like hmm. who wants to be a millionaire, but it's going to be, you know, um, all gardening questions. And obviously you're not going to be a millionaire, but we're going to have prizes. So that is something um, that we are working on here. So, and it'll be a lot of fun. So if you want to sign up for that, we'll have uh, signups for that here before too long. And that's going to be right after the Super Bowl Thursday. So we're going to give Jujubi and Dr. Polo a break for Thursday. So they get a little break. They got to work in their seat starting that time period. So <laughs> it's going to be on Thursdays for that. So that's going to be a lot of fun to see who's going to sign up. And um, yeah, that might that might go all the way to whole summer, to tell you the truth. But we expect that that's going to be that's going to be so much fun. <laughs> and we have six other contests that we're going to announce today. Six winner gets a hundred dollars, and there's going to be a time to start. You got to make three videos when you start with the seed packet, middle of season. So, there's going to be a date criteria in each one. So, don't think we have to do is watch your video and cross it off. And you got to do the hashtag grow big TV contest, something like that. But that's going to come out in the next couple of days, too. So, the six contest we're going to have is the watermelon radish. Mm -hmm. And the only thing you have to do with the watermelon radish, well, you just got to weigh it. Pretty simple. The only thing, it cannot split. If it splits, it's out. And that's going to be the first contest. The second contest is going to be the Detroit beat. The Detroit beat. Same thing. It cannot split. If it splits, it's out. And that's going to be by weight. The third contest is going to be the zucchini. Who could grow the longest zucchini? And uh, if it changes color and it's not edible, it's not going to work. Right. So, and we could tell if it's totally green on one side and the bottom's a little yellow. We get it. It's been laying on the ground, but it's still edible. But it has to be edible. But it's if it's turning yellow of any sort, it's not ed edible. You know, you could tell the whole side of the zucchini would turn color. But that's not going to be. If you have any questions, you must message us and say, hey, look, here we get to get a picture of this. Is this, should I pick this? Could I wait to go a little longer? You know, just message us. You got to communicate. If you just say, here comes a date and all of a sudden show us a zucchini and make us a decision on a show, it's not going to work. So you gotta you gotta be upfront with us. The fourth contest is gonna be the Dr. Ridgey Tomato or Dr. YG, Dr. Widgey, Widgey, YG, Widgey, you know, the yellow Something tomato. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's gonna be the tomato we're gonna use. Okay, guys, you guys wanted to see my bulldog, so I want to show you a picture real quick. There she is. <laughs> She's, pretty she's really wild and um, she's only about 15 pounds. That's all the bigger she's going to get. So, so Look there y'all go. You got your puppy fix in for today. Now she's starting to talk. She's very upset with me right now. Yeah. Yeah. Betty says, Dr. Wedgie. <laughs> it's a Dr. Wedgie. Dr. Ridgie. W Y C H E. People have pronounced it all kind of different names. Nobody ever pronounced it right. So who knows? The other contest is going to be the Mammoth Sunflower Challenge. And it's going to be the width of the sunflower. Pretty simple. So that's the other prize. And the last one is, well, the Peter Pepper. Because there is only one Peter Pepper. <laughs> and, and it's only obvious why it's called that. But it's like... Yeah, you can't fake that one. You can't fake it at all. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about growing big. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully you guys get into those contests. So we got a lot of contests there. Hopefully you guys enjoy everything. Uh, winners get each one. Whoever wins gets $100. Um, the hot dog eating contest, we'll see what the prize is going to be. I'm going to find out how many people are going to enter. And, uh, yeah, so much fun. So much fun. 
and uh, who wants to be a not a millionaire, but we still got to find out a good name for that. If you, if you guys say in the chat, let us know if you could come up with a good name for that contest. Just never know where you can find it. If not, we're quirky and I are going to keep on working on that. <laughs> so, but if you come up with something, let us know. Okay. Anybody else new that just came on in before we start? Hey, there's, it's the marshmallow man. Who wants to be a master gardener? That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a real big TV, TV master gardener. You got the Jersey yeah. Twister here. Wouldn't necessarily be the master gardener, but you could be a grow, big, grow big TV master gardener. We got Happy Mac. Rick is here. Welcome in, Rick. There's Betty Barnes. Thank you. Riverdale Gardens is here. And if anybody sees Jay Dixon, uh, say we're just a little worried about her. Hopefully she's okay. So I don't know if anybody sees her or any chats. Australia is here. Uh, Rick, it's it's um, summer over there in Australia, right? So just checking out on that. Who wants to be an expert? Hmm. Well, it's going to be all garden questions. And we'll play it with music and stuff like that. You know, um, it's going to be fun. <laughs> One second with a quirky. That's why I put quotes. <laughs> What's a quote? <laughs> Welcome in, Barb Brownlee. Okay. So let's go. We're going to start our growing guide. Um, share this out if you guys can. We appreciate it. Let's get started. Can you hear my dog? Yeah. <laughs> I am so sorry. I can't shut her up, so I apologize. I'll go mute when I can. It's going to be one of those days. It's all good. I'm sorry. It's all good. It's all good. It's not too loud. Okay, Brussels Sprouts Growing Guide. The Brussels sprout get its moniker from the city of its origin, Brussels, in Belgium. It did not occur until the beginning of the 19th century. These crunchy green delights, tasted lovely, roasted or steamed. Brussels sprouts are full of dietary fiber, and they're an excellent source of vitamin D, C, and folic acid. Brussels sprouts are a classic cold hardy vegetable recognized by small sprouts lined in the two to four foot stalks. A close relative to cabbages are tight heads on tender leaves, like mini cabbages grown on a stalk of a tall, leafy plant. The large leaves are smooth and thick and resemble collard greens and you could prepare them in the same way the only problem with those guys is well brussels sprouts they get a lot of bugs uh, a lot of a lot of those green little things that blend right on in mm -hmm. so they get those holes in the leaves so well you surround it really helps out really well <laughs> yeah. uh, brussels sprouts are a classic cold hardy fall vegetable Oh, wait, one second. I already read that. Look at that. Where each leaf joins the stem, a small sprout develops beginning with the lowest leaves and continued up the stalk. The sprouts can be large as two inches in diameter, but the dar uh, gardeners often harvest them when they are smaller. They have a long maturity period, typically 90 to 100 days, and are often are best harvested after the first uh, few frosts as cold weather improves their flavor. Um. Site selection and crop, crop care. Brussels sprouts produce the best crops when planted in full sun. Though they will tolerate part shade in average soils with moderate fertility and the pH factor above 6. To maintain steady growth, the crop should be fertilized and irrigated in dry weather. Pair, uh, plants should be provided the equivalent of 1 inch of water per week. Crops grown under poor uh, fertility or dry conditions will yield sprouts of lesser quality. Cool weather will provide the best growing conditions, especially when forming sprouts. But the plants will grow well in areas where mild wet, mild summer weather prior to uh, sprout formation. 
Improve your soil by adding well-rotted manure, compost, and a spring or fall. Do not use fresh manure as it may contain harmful bacteria. It may increase weed problems. Try dress when the plants are about four inches tall. Sprouts, uh, Brussels sprouts prefer alkaline soil, so work lime into your soil a few weeks before planting. Why do I need companion plants for growing sprouts? Companion plants are important since they help keep the pests away and diseases from your Brussels sprouts. They also keep the soil mo moist, loosen it up, attract pollinators, and can therefore improve the overall behavior of your Brussels sprouts. It is therefore crucial that you check out the best and worst companion plants for your Brussels sprouts to avoid any mistakes in re this regard. Now, companion plants. Um, so these are companion plants, and why is it good? Carrots can enhance the flavor of your Brussels sprouts. Anything you want to increase your flavor, that's what you want to plant, guys. So carrots is one of those. Celery, it keeps the bugs away. Peas, it loosens the soil. Onions, it helps re uh, repel rust flies. Mint, it repels aphids and flea beetles. Oh, man, I hate those freaking aphids. Basil repels flies, mites, mosquitoes, aphids. Rosemary, it keeps away moss and rust flies. Beans, fixes nitrogen in the soil. Marigolds, repels nematodes and white flies. And you know what? Ever since I planted all marigold, marigolds in my garden, never really had a problem with white flies. When I first started, when I first got here, it was full of white flies. I couldn't get rid of them. Plant marigolds. Chamomile. <laughs> we say that wrong. Right? Can improve the flavor of your Brussels sprouts. Another look at that, huh? <laughs> Dill attracts bees for pollination. Garlic repels aphids, maggots, and white flies. Sage keep away moss and rust flies. Now, what's bad a plant next to a Brussels sprout? Eggplants. Why? Because it takes away nutrients from your Brussels sprouts. Peppers takes away sunlight from your sprouts. Potatoes attracts pests that can hurt your Brussels sprouts. Tomatoes takes away precious nutrients from your sprouts, and mustard greens may attract pests that feed on Brussels sprouts. Boo! <laughs> fertilization. Precisely timed fertilization has a direct correlation with the quality of sprouts produced. Plants should not be fertilized after early July. Stopping fertilization initiates sprout formation and seizes growth to the stem. At this time, the leaves may begin to yellow and drop from the stem that is normal. Fertilization uh, techniques can vary depending on the size of the area planted, the capabilities of your equipment, and how much fertilizer your crop needs. For direct to market production prior to planting, uh, prior to planting, perform a soil test to identify your fertilization needs. Every time we do these growing, guys, I'm, we're always going to say is test your soil because nobody here does it. I would say 99% of people that have a garden don't test their soils. It's little things that we need to start doing. Home gardens. Pro, prior to planting, perform a soil test. A soil sample can be sent to a local cooperative extension service, or a soil test can be purchased through a catalog, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, or other websites. Amend the soil prior to planting as needed with compost. If your soil is fertile and a crop is grown well, do not fertilize. If, the, if you don't need it, why put extra in? Right. Uh, part of problems with the garden is that we're always adding stuff. We're adding way too much, and that's always a problem in the garden. If your plants seem to be slowing da down, then add compost near the base and hoe some soil over the compost um, and water it in. This can't be repeated whenever the plants are slowing down into early July. If you choose not to perform a soil test, then plant and your best ground in your garden. Transplanting. While direct seeding is possible, it is recommended to transplant, uh, transplant Brussels sprouts. So two to three seeds per cell in a 72 cell uh, plug flat or so three to four seeds per inch in a 20 row flat, uh, quarter inch deep, 46 weeks before transplant and keep temperatures in a 75 degree range until germination occur, uh, occurs. When seedings are three to four inches tall, transplant with 18 inch space in between and uh, between uh, plants and rows 24 inches apart. Okay, let me just stop for a second there. Gotta get a drink. <laughs> I want to show you guys a quick video. Pixie Dust Traveler, welcome in. It's good to see you. Let's see who else came, just came on in. 
I think that's about it. I think that's what kept everybody here. So thank you everyone for coming. So Juliana sent me a video, actually sent me two videos. I want to show you this video quick. I thought it was pretty interesting. It's not the did you know, it's the big bang statement. The big bang statement. Ooh. This is what I mean by the big bang statement. So we've set up 1,000 sprouts, and those are connected via zinc and copper electrodes. And the electrolytes from the sprouts allow a current to flow and illuminate our Christmas tree lights. This is something that's never been done before. No one has used Brussels sprouts to illuminate lights before. This is a great project because we're using basic scientific techniques here to illuminate uh, the Christmas tree lights. And hopefully it will inspire the next generation of engineers and technicians to um, get stuck in and have a go. We don't do things like this, but we do a lot of experiments at school. This really inspires me to do more scientific things at school and at home. I think that was pretty interesting. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, the, the, the things that create power, like potatoes and Brussels sprouts. Yeah. It's like, who knew? Who knew? <laughs> and we're going to go over Juliana's segment after I'm done with uh, my little segment here. And then we're going to go into the seed packets. So let's go back to the growing guide. Thank you, everybody, for coming. I appreciate it. Okay, Brussels sprouts growing guide. And I just started. Oh, oh man, I got to do this all again. No. <laughs> And you notice it's crooked. I have no idea why it's crooked. Transplanting. While direct seeding is possible, it is recommended to transplant Brussels sprouts. So two to three seeds per cell. I already said that, right? Yes. Okay. Control and weeds. Now, who? one thing we start our garden, guys, you, you're growing great. Everything's going well. Then something happens. You don't have the time. And all of a sudden, your first garden you ever have is full of weeds. And it's like... Oh, the only thing I'm doing is weeding. It's not enjoyable. Well, we got to figure out what to do to, so we can have a lot less weeds. Because your garden will always have weeds. And some weeds are beneficial, so don't forget that. You just got to know what you're picking. Uh, frequent frequent shadow digging with a hoe or a trowel will kill weeds before they become a, pr a problem. What I recommend is each row has a part of the week. So it matters how big your garden is. So just take a hoe. And go down one row on Monday. And you see a weed, use the hoe. Tuesday, do a different row. Wednesday, do a different row. And that way, you're not time-consumed in your garden the whole time. Hoes and are that so way, handy. What was that? I didn't hear you. I said hoes are so handy. Oh, yes, they are. Ho! <laughs> <laughs> and when you're using a hoe, you know, look for those little critters on your plants. So you could always look, and you, should, you know, got to always watch out for those. Got to watch out for those hoes. Got to watch out for no, no little hoe. <laughs> oh. oh. A lot of stuff just went through my mind. <laughs> uh, cultivate cultivate deeply <laughs> enough to cut the weeds. <laughs> Great Don't go too deep. She, she's like, I thought you said handsy. You didn't say handsy. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness, Des. Oh, my goodness, Dees. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Myra? Welcome in. <laughs> uh, I got to take a deep breath tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Cultivate just deeply enough to cut the weeds off below the surface. Be careful not to damage the plants when cultivating. Mulching with herbicide-free grass clippings, weed-free straw, or other organic material to a depth of three or four inches can help prevent weeds from coming up, decreasing the need for frequent, frequent cultivation. I'm going to be using uh, a lot of stuff in the bars <laughs> this year. I'm not talking about putting bear, can bear uh, bottles in the garden, guys. <laughs> Put them in the ground and see if anything comes up. I seen that in a video. I don't think it was real. 
Okay, that was stupid, but <laughs> reminds me of a video I watched today. It was pretty funny. Um, anyway, I'm, uh, cardboard, when you go down to Jersey Shore, it's all over the place by truckloads. So I could just grab one of those things, put them in a garden, and there's my weed control. Right. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that, and maybe hopefully not any bees come and hide underneath it and surprise the heck out of me. Anyway, uh, topping. For, now, this is very important. Um, you could top your plant for the production goes below. And I like le- letting the top go because I want more sun coming to that plant. Just like a tree would. And you see trees, right? Trees, right. they got huge trees. So the sun hits the top, not the bottom. And the tr- and plant grows really well. So I like letting a... Tr- I don't like topping as much. But underneath the Brussels sprouts is where you got to turn and pluck off the branches and that's what makes the brussel start to grow start to pop out and so uh you could do either war it doesn't matter i just don't like the totally top okay let's top and for earlier more production pinch out the growing points at the top of the plants this should be done when the sprouts or a lower part of the stems are half an inch to three quarters of an inch in diameter although brussel sprouts can withstand cold temperatures extreme cold can damage quality and non-top plants should have a growing point pinch six to eight weeks before a hard freeze. So if you are looking at, uh, I, I have planted Brussels sprouts. I mean, I have harvested Brussels sprouts on Christmas. So in New Jersey, um, just plants take a long time, 120 days, 130 yeah. Brussels sprouts. Yeah, they take a very long time. That's why sometimes, since they... Since they're so hardy, a lot of times I start them in February or March mm-hmm. because they're so hardy they can they can they're fine with the frost and everything. So I like to have them ready for Thanksgiving. It seems like a great dish to have. Everybody in the family is there, and uh, I like I think that's a great time period because you want that cold. When you have that cold binge like that, it takes when you get that frost, it makes things so much better. Yeah. Um, diseases. You know what? I want to show you guys something. And I have it on my phone. Just give me a second. I had all this other information on Brussels sprouts I was going to show you. I just ran out of time. Now, this picture was taken. No, it's not this one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on, where are you? Come on, come on, I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong. Uh, Jersey Twister wants to know, I've never grown them here. Um, when do we start seeds here in New Jersey? I'm not sure when we start. Jersey. You start in February, March. February. Because you, you can't plant it earlier. So before the first frost, you know. I like planting everything out around Mother's Day. Oh, man, it didn't save. So I had a picture of me with Brussels sprouts that I grow. And Joey was on one side, like, almost eating it. It was pretty funny. Um, Man, I can't believe today was my son's high school orientation. And uh, just thinking about it, like, well, high school already? Oh, my God. I know. That's crazy. I can't believe I don't have it. I thought I, 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 Our Georgia suburban home said, um, she said she can't grow Brussels sprouts to save her life. And um, I was six, pretty successful at growing uh, Brussels sprouts. Um, I was just really patient with them. You may want to consider a hybrid if you're having trouble with heirloom ones, um, you know, stuff like that. There are little tricks too. Like you literally have to pull all the leaves off it looks really ugly, but if you pull the leaves off, it will make your Brussels sprouts tighter so that they, cause uh, before in the past I had an issue where my Brussels sprouts opened up and they looked like little mini cabbages. They were like this, they weren't closed like the ones you see in the store. So you have to pull all the leaves off so that they can get tighter. So that helps too, but I would consider a hybrid and maybe that will help you, um, get started on them or maybe help with bugs or whatever else you got going on. Go ahead, Joe. I'm sorry. 
So a Brussels sprout would look like that. Yeah. Those little stems you have to take off. Yep. Well, I can't. Whoop. Right there. Whoop. <laughs> so you got to take those little branches off when they start to form. And don't twist it. Just snap it. Or use a shear. Mm -hmm. And so that's when you start to get them off. I can't believe. And so your plant... I really, I, I took this pictures. So I, I wasted a half an hour at work today, actually, <laughs> on my break, taking a pic, find, trying to find that picture of me with the Brussels sprouts. Anyway, it should look like that after you take the branches off. Yeah, because <clears throat> yeah, mine looked like little mini cabbages. They were open, and I was like, "What the heck is going on with my Brussels sprouts?" And everybody's like, "No, you have to take those branches off, or they'll never form right." So I, you know, took most of where all my Brussels sprouts were. I took the leaves off. It looked really weird. It looked like a little mini palm tree. Um, it was really strange looking, but it worked. So. Yes, uh, it looks that ugly when you take the branches off because they're yeah. that small. But they're really cool. Anyway, oh, I can't believe I, I, I can't believe I worked so hard on that picture to snap it. <laughs> okay, let's get back. Um, what did Georgia, uh, our Georgia suburban homestead last year was the first year with side sprouts, but they were open, like you said. I wasn't going to try them this year, but might just try your method. I have never had a problem growing Brussels sprouts. Um, maybe because it's just Jersey weather, get really lucky here with our growing uh, mediums and everything. Yeah, you might have like the perfect weather, but where you are by the beach or where you know with the wind. I don't know. You might have perfect weather, so or something. The biggest thing with growing Brussels sprouts is the insects, the bug damage. Um, that That is the biggest issue. And using the surround was a game changer. Yeah. Because you don't got you don't have them on your plant. Most of the people don't eat. We don't eat the leaves. So to us, we're just we're growing, growing uh, sprouts. So it's perfect. It is perfect. That and, you know, and oh, what, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Joe. I didn't know you had more to say. Go ahead. Sorry. And you know what? When you're looking for something in a garden in November, it's perfect. It's something in a garden you could go, you know, beside your spinach and lettuces and broccoli, cauliflower, you know, go get your Brussels sprouts too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Brussels sprouts are very strange for the fact, and I've noticed this with celery too, um, you have to soak them before you eat them. And that's a lot with a lot of vegetables because for some reason um, they get little like spider mites and everything on the inside of them. So you could soak them in vinegar water and uh, it, it kills the bugs instantly and you'll see them all float to the top. It's so disgusting. But um, yeah, it, with the Brussels sprouts, it's like unless you're chopping them in half um, and you pull out every single individual bug. The best thing to do is to soak them before you can or cook or whatever you decide to do with them. You, you, know what you know what, Rick? I'm going to do an exper experiment this year with topping and going from below to see what what could be what what sprout could grow the biggest. Um, I think that's pretty important because you, I always start it from the bottom, just like what you said there, instead of the top, and. Again, if you want to generate the power underneath, if, the, if your plant's grown to a really good height, top, then top. Yeah. You don't need it to keep on growing. Don't you could also let this go. Green stalker, because she's like, oh my God, it's bugs, them too. That's it. I'll probably never eat another one. Well, it's in everything. That's in straw. It's in strawberries. Bugs are everywhere on your vegetables. You just don't see them or notice anything. That's why it's kind of important to wash your vegetables before you eat them. I always do because I'm always afraid a big bird pooped on it before I decide to, you know, eat it. <laughs> so I always rinse it before I eat. So, you know, you just have to soak them a little bit before you, you try it or cook them or whatever. It's, it's not hard. I know it gets kind of gross, but it's, it, I'd rather soak them and get the bugs out of them than eat a big old thing of celery or snap a thing of celery and realize that there was like 101 bugs in it. <laughs> so the thing we're trying to teach though is organic. Because the stuff they spray on your plants 
especially Brussels sprouts, guys, it's disgusting. Never buy Brussels sprouts in the store if it's not organic. And organic's not really even organic. They're still spraying stuff on it. So, but if you had a choice, never choose Brussels sprouts because, I mean, it's disgusting. What You guys don't even want to know. You That's really why I'm know. really weird about canning things. I see a lot of people out there, oh, I canned this and I canned that this weekend. And I'm like, like, especially specifically potatoes. I, f I think it was rubble who told me that they spray all different kinds of chemicals in the dirt. And then your potatoes are like the number one thing that soaks everything up. So then what do you do? You buy a 50 pound bag at the grocery store and then you can that. So I just canned a bunch of pesticides with my potatoes. That's how I look at it. And it kind of grosses me out. <laughs> so I haven't done that in a while because of that reason. Um, so, but all my tomatoes, I know I didn't put anything on them. So when I can them, they're, it is 100% organic, 100%. Um, well, somebody asked, Corky, how do you get rid of spiders bitten so many times? Well, okay. So one, if you're in the garden, you don't want to get rid of any spider. None. Um, they all have a purpose. Wolf spiders get rid of the nasty ones. Um, and they'll, they'll eat the other ones to death, like, uh, the recluses and stuff. They don't get along. So if you have wolf spiders in your house or around your house, just be thankful because you won't have the others the bad ones um but as far as like banana spiders and any type of orb weaver you're gonna want them in your garden they eat all those bugs they eat the nasty harley quinn bugs and the and the aphids and all of that um if you're getting bit i suggest wearing gloves in the garden that helps leather gloves i have a pair of leather gloves that i have specifically for pruning um roses because I always end up getting scratched or something um, or wear long sleeves. That helps as well. But um, don't get rid of spiders in your garden. They all have a purpose um, and they all want to eat the bad bugs. So, oh, and I love jumping spiders. Freaking love them. Oh, like you they see eat the bugs like that, the big ones, they only eat like little flies and stuff because they're so small. But yeah, jumping spiders are so cute. So Deborah wants to wants me to show her what a wolf spider looks like. Okay. They usually are brown. They have long legs. And if they are pregnant or have a ton of babies, they carry them on their back. So they have billions of babies on their backs. Well, look at the face of that wolf spider. Yeah, they do bite. They will bite you. It's really rare that they will. Um, but they will eat those other bugs um, or other spiders. Um, that are deadly, but yeah, those suckers, they're really, you don't want to have those around for sure. And they're smart. Everything, every <laughs> animal or every bug has a purpose, you know? So you try not to mess up that balance. However, I haven't figured out the stink bug purpose. <sighs> I still have them in my house, even though it's like, it's so cold outside. I, I think they're trying to come in more. They like, weave their way into the cracks of your windows and they i don't know but in anyway i hate stink bugs they're my arch nemesis we have gotten less every single year i don't know if it's because i put my uh the ladybugs and prey mantis down every year because i constantly go get them but less and less every single year <laughs> um so that's a good thing okay let's get back to the growing guide and we'll, we'll answer any kind of question you guys have yeah. I don't know what the vine borer's purpose is, but I kill that. <laughs> I don't want that thing around. <laughs> okay, I think we're at diseases. So there's only 13 pages. We're on the page number eight already. So this is going to be almost done. We should go about 15 pages or so, 15, 16, 17. Um, diseases. To control diseases, adhere strictly to preventative program that includes a long crop rotations. At least uh, three years, you use clean starting mixes and strict sanitation practices. Should the disease occur in your crop, you need to identify the disease. Just don't let it go. You got to make sure you identify it. Yeah. Or come, come to us with your, if you have a disease on your plant, come to us, show us by a picture so we could look it up and see if we could help you out. And it's really easy 
Like if you have a leaf that's like totally screwed up, take that leaf off, hold it in your hand or hold it on a piece of paper or something and Google image search it. If you Google image search it, it more than likely will tell you what kind of disease that is. You don't need those fancy plant apps. You don't need any of that. Just Google search it and figure it out from there. there you when go. you start seeing that, that's when you want to get on it. And a lot of times I even like, I'll put stuff down even to prevent it from happening. Like a lot of things, especially organically, you want to start spraying right away because a lot of that stuff takes like a lot of time for it to kick in. And people are like, Oh, I use this and it didn't work. Well, one, you probably already showed a sign and two, it was too late by the time you put it on. So it probably wouldn't work, but like things like when I make a garlic spray or stuff like that, I spray that on my cucumbers right away because I always end up getting cucumber bugs. It doesn't matter if I crop rotate, it doesn't matter. They love those things. And if they spray that garlic spray, I don't get rid of them completely, but I get enough to where I have a great cucumber harvest where they're not decimating my plants. That makes sense. Well said. Okay. You got to be out in the garden. You got to look. You got to look for it, guys. Because if you don't look for those bugs, they're going to come get you sooner or later. <laughs> Looking for those holes in those leaves. If you see something, just don't. Oh, that's fine. It's, it's starting to go. Don't worry about. It. No, you got to find it. You got to find a bug. Yeah. Especially on those tomato plants. They start tomato plants starting to get eaten. Man, you got to look. Uh, a common disease uh, of Brussels sprouts is black rot. It's identified by yellow uh, yellow lesions on the leaves in its earliest stages. As the disease progresses, the affected leaves may die and turn brown to black. There are two host-specific uh, species of Altenuria mold that affects Brussels sprouts and other brassica. Small dark spots that later expand into larger tan circles are present on infected leaves. Alternaria favors wet, wet conditions to ensure proper air ventilation to prevent it. Pest. The best insect pest control on young plants is the use of floating row covers, just like most brassicas. Mm -hmm. Watch out for those white little butterflies going around. Oh, they're so beautiful. And then you realize that they're really laying eggs so the cow caterpillars can eat your, all your cabbage. Oh, my gosh. What was I thinking? <laughs> Use road covers. Invest in road covers right now if you can. Yes, you know what? Spring vegetables are great, guys. They mm -hmm. are outstanding. But row covers helps tremendously. Um, put row covers in place on a day of transplanting. If heavy pressure from flea beetle, beetles observed, treat with serenade. Cabbage worms can be controlled with uh, BT. The presence of Cutworms can be prevented by cultivating the soil two, uh, two to four weeks before transplanting seedlings to work in any uh, any cover crops and destroy weeds. One of the most uh, prevalent insect pests in Brussels sprouts are cabbage aphids. Aphids occur in dense groups and can be identified and can be identified by their white waxy appearance. They tend to be attracted to the young leaves that form the sprouts, causing a problem problem in the harvested crop. Apply an insect soap, which helps control the aphids. And that's so simple, guys, to do with the insect soap. Um, again, it's all about, you know, if you love your, it's like loving your kid, right? If you, if the kid's something wrong with it, you want to go check them out. Same thing with the plant. You know, if you see something going on, you're not going to just say, oh, like my kid's crying out, just ignore him. He's okay. <laughs> you know? So just make sure you love your plants like you do your kids and you'll have a better garden. Um, There's a price to plant, pay, guys, when you're doing things organically. You know, um, not everything's going to be perfect because you're doing it organically. Um, of course, it, anyone can garden if you go out there and you sprinkle some seven dust all over everything. Um, it kills everything. And then you won't have butterflies, you won't have ladybugs, you won't have anything in your garden that's any type of any benefit. So just remember that. you you It's the price that you're paying to grow organically. By the way, 
I just read the news before um, today, before I even came on here, and they had a listeria breakout on a bunch of baby spinach. Ooh. So, you know, it's really, really important to grow your own food, guys. Really, really important. I have yet to eat lettuce ever since they had that um, E. coli bra breakout on that romaine lettuce back in 2018. I have not ate or bought lettuce from the store since then. Um, I will grow it in my garden because I trust it. I know what I put on it, um, but I have not bought it from the store. We have poisoned the soil for 40 years. Sooner or later, that soil is not soil anymore. So that lettuce, we buy a lot lettuce, it's probably the same lettuce field for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. There's no nutrients in it anymore. The, that lettuce is not lettuce what it used to be. I don't know, y'all. If you ever gotten a salad somewhere and the lettuce is all white, you're like, hmm, wonder where that came from. <laughs> like, that has zero nutrients in it whatsoever. There is no green. There is nothing in that. Nothing. That's terrible. Oof. Welcome in Tropical Buzz. That's Nora the Stock Explorer. Welcome in, Nora. And welcome in, Shani. Welcome in. Thank you for coming. Okay. Harvest. Prior to harvest is... It is common for the leaves that the plants turn yellow is the result of plant pulling nutrients from the leaves and directing them to develop and sprouts, not the effects of a nutrient deficiency. Sprouts can be harvested after the first frost into the end of December in most areas and through the winter in areas where the cold is not severe. Pick sprouts when they, were, when they are firm and well-formed, generally beginning when the lower leaves start to turn yellow. Break off the leaf before uh, below the sprout and snap off the sprout. Snap! If the plant was not topped, the upper sprouts will continue to form and enlarge as the lower ones are harvested. If the plants were topped, the entire stalks may be harvested at once by cutting the stem uh, below the lowest sprouts. Cooking. What do you guys like to cook with your Brussels sprouts? Well, I like to prepare Brussels sprouts by sautéing the sprouts in a pan with a, a bit of honey. I like everything with honey these days. Because why? Because my wife can't eat honey because she's allergic to it. That means I eat more. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I know, I'm just kidding, but I do like using the honey. Uh, a bit of honey to add sweetness and some cranberries to add tartness. Caramelizing the Brussels sprouts softens their strong cabbage-like flavor and mellows out the bitterness. They also equally enjoy roasted in the oven or... Shave raw into a salad. Or Mother shredding, yeah, you can shred them up and put them in a salad. Way safer than romaine lettuce and baby spinach these days. <laughs> and um, what I really like too, and it's similar to Brussels sprouts, is a good cabbage. As a good cabbage salad. Um, you shred it up. It's freaking delicious. Um, plus cabbage is a natural anti-inflammatory. So when you're eating it, it's really, really good for you. It, you know... It helps your joints and stuff like that. And if you're pregnant and nursing and you want to stop, people have advised putting cabbage leaves um, on your boobs to help to stop the you know lactation. Um, so yeah, cabbage works and it it's very good for you. Plus, it's delicious. You can put cranberries and all different kinds of stuff in it and make a really yummy, yummy salad out of it. And it's not near as dangerous as romaine right now. So now you know why the Polacks love cabbage. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. It's yummy. Look at the cabbage on her. <laughs> my other way, my other favorite way to cook them is in the oven and roast them with olive oil, salt, and pepper until crisp, and add a harvest ball with shredded chicken, cranberries, and carrots. So that's what I like to do with them. Now pickle the Brussels sprouts. Twelve crumbs. 12 cups of small Brussels sprouts, 4 cups, 5% uh, uh, acidity, white uh, white vinegar, 2 cups of sugar, 2 cups of thinly sliced onions, 1 cup of diced sweet red peppers, 2 tablespoons mustard seed, 1 tablespoon of celery seed, 1 teaspoon of turmeric, 1 teaspoon of hot pepper flakes, because you got to put a little pepper in everything. <laughs> and it yields about 9 half pints. I just made a red pepper flake. Dude, I just made this... Um... It's an, a vegetarian type of salad, and it has peppers, um, cucumbers in it, um, all different kinds of stuff in it. And it called for red pepper flake. 
So I loaded it with red pepper flake and I'm like eating it. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I put too much in it. It is so hot. I couldn't handle it anymore. My <laughs> husband's like eating. It. He's like, what? It's not that hot. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I won't be doing that again. I can tell you that. It was too much. And talk about a little heat. We should know something from Pucker Butt very, very soon. So we did get a message the other day and a lot of stuff's going on over there. They just gave out. I know David Gray won one day with the... Uh, on Pucker Butt Show, they were giving out uh, hot sauces every day. So if you, there's a lot of stuff in our community page. If you guys ever check out our community popcorn, page, that popcorn that you gave us, that was supposed to be hot, but it wasn't really hot. It was delicious. Oh yeah, that was actually very good. Yeah. <laughs> that was true. I have that particular ice and went really good. Never had a problem with it. <laughs> Gotta be See, careful. I love red pepper flake too, and I make Korean beef. And I'll put red pepper flake in it, but for some reason I loaded um, this cu these cucumbers and and peppers and everything else um, with it, and I loaded it with on there. And oh my gosh, it was like burning me out. Oh, look at that! David Gray won three times over there. Nice. Under twelve days of hot sauces, which is really cool. I won three times too. I can't wait to see. <laughs> I got in there too. They said free. I'm in. <laughs> dude, all the hot pepper dudes, they're all into pucker butt. They like, there's a, there is a, like a store near me in a, it's like in a um, flea market. You know, they have like all pucker butt products. Mm -hmm. And um, my uh, brother in law, he's like, I go there to get all my stuff and it's all pucker butt. And I'm like, Man, it's like really popular in the pepper world, man. <laughs> like people flock to it. Number one hot sauce company there is right there at Pucker Button. Yeah. We're hoping to have them as an affiliate. So uh, can't beat that. <laughs> so this is the last thing we're going to finish up here. Freezing Brussels sprouts to freeze like green firm and compost heads. Make sure the heads are free from insects. Uh, trim and remove the coarse outer leaves. Wash thoroughly. Sort into small, medium, or and large heads, water blanch, uh, the small heads for three minutes, medium heads for four minutes, and large heads for five minutes. Cool uh, promptly in, in ice water for the same number of minutes. Strain, package, leave no head space. Seal, label, date, and freeze. Boom. 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 Now I can see the chat. <laughs> it feels so weird not really reading the chat this whole time when you put that in front of you. Uh, so we got 37 people in the chat. Thank you guys all for coming. We got trivia, got trivia coming up in a little bit. So we're going to show Juju -ju 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 Beast video. Did you know? Did you know? I don't know. But you know what? Before, did you know? Hey, you know what? Did you know that my gardener seeds and Mary's heirloom seeds is an affiliate of ours? And, um, and my gardener. If you use a hashtag grow big, you get 10% off. And at Mary's heirloom seeds, if you use the word grow big, you get 10% off there. But that helps us in a lot of ways. Right. A lot more ways than my gardener, tell you the truth. Um, so if you guys could check out those two affiliates, there's other affiliates we're going to have very soon. So that's it all in a process, such as garden supply store. Um, magazines.com came as a thing too. So just little things that is, uh, will help us continue to grow in a lot of ways. So let's see J -j 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 Juby's video. Did you know? 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 <laughs> Thank you, Jujube. Yes, that is a good way to put it. I'm pinning that to the top. Um, so you know, you guys, uh, what to go to and how to use it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you know Brussels sprouts edition? Did you know Brussels sprouts take their name from the Belgian capital because they have been cultivated in the surrounding area since at least the 13th century? Did you know that Brussels sprouts are a domesticated version of wild cabbages that were grown in Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Iran? They've been around for a very long time indeed, and they were used in Chinese medicine for the treatment of bowel problems as long ago as 3000 BC. Did you know 
that Brussels sprouts are a great source of vitamin K and C, as well as alpha linoleic acid and omega-3 fatty acid. They were considered so healthy that along with oranges and lemons, Captain Cook fed them to his crew to help prevent developing vitamin C deficiency called scurvy. They have more vitamin C than half a, half a cup than one whole orange. Did you know that the Netherlands account for the greatest production of Brussels sprouts of the whole world? Did you know that Cornwall College found that Brussels sprouts contain a chemical similar to phenyl theocarbamide that only tastes bitter to people who have a variation of a certain gene. Did you know that some studies suggest that Brussels sprouts increase your libido? Did you know that carving an X at the stem before steaming helps them cook more evenly? Did you know that Brussels sprouts can be enjoyed many ways? Steaming, stirring, roasting, boiling, even enjoying as a salad are all amazing ways to enjoy Brussels sprouts of very different flavors. Did you know that the sulfurophane that gives Brussels sprouts their unique flavor also helps lower cancer risks? Mm. Did you know that in October 1992, Bernard Laverley in the UK grew a Brussels sprout that weighed in at 8.3 kilograms? That's 18 pounds, 3 ounces. Wow, grow big. Did you know that Dalton from Brahms Grove, Worcester, achieved her record in 2016 by eating a gut-busting 325 of these festive vegetables in 36 minutes? Wayne Sherlock, however, from Ireland, holds the world record for the number of Brussels sprouts eaten in 60 seconds, managing 33. Did okay. you know? Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? No, thanks. I'm not going to be eating that many Brussels sprouts in one sitting. Can you imagine what my colon would be telling me? <laughs> Why did you do this to yourself? Yeah, if you have huge digest everything's good in moderation. So never do anything in life that's way too much. So that's always been a uh, saying. So let's see what's up in the chat. Tropical Buzz, I need to do one of these for you. Let's see what else. Tiny Cabbage, that was, there we go. Rick says, wow, that was interesting. Very Another awesome did you know. Totally. <laughs> Thanks, Greenson. She said my colon has an interesting accent. <laughs> you got to hear mine when I go to the movies. <laughs> 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 no, with having diverticulitis, it sounds like I'm hungry. And I'm like, no, that's my, just my food trying to go to. Oh, it's horrible when you're like quiet somewhere. Your stomach never shuts up. A second. Did you know he may have had toxic gas? <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? So um, we're going to go to our seeds. So the seeds we're going to go over today is tropical sunset tomato. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. So tropical. So tropical. And let's get, since we're tropical, let's get Jamaican, man. Mon. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> Uh, the Jamaican yellow mushroom. Right now. So we do when we do trivia, we're giving these out. Look at that one. Look at yeah. that tomato. Lucky tiger tomato. Cantaloupe. Rocky Ford cantaloupe. Boom. I love me some cantaloupe. Did you know that cantaloupe is really good for your gut? No, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been finding all this stuff out. Ooh, Big Max. Big Max. We wanted to do the pumpkin in our challenges. The problem is, is nobody has a scale that can weigh that much. <laughs> if you really want to grow a big one, because they can go up to 400 pounds. And a lot of people don't have the scale above 250 or 300. Right. You know, what happens if you have a big one? You're going to go buy another scale? No, I don't think so. And a real big pumpkin scoop, you know, they go a thousand pounds. Who's picking that sucker up and put on a scale? <laughs> Not, I. <laughs> Not I either. So we had to go away with that contest. Okay, so let's get to our seed packets. Bum, bum, bum. 
I'm still uh, that freaking wolf spider. Boom. Oh, so our first one is the Big Maps Max Pumpkin. Woohoo! Look at that sucker, guys. I know. I want to grow that, too. Even though it's not part of the competition, I would like to grow I don't think I'd have room for it this year, though. But I'd like to grow it eventually. Okay, y'all. It says, these pumpkins grow big. Each plant can produce up to five pumpkins each. The smooth skin variety is known for its very thick stem and bright orange color. It is all up to how you care for them to reach their biggest size. The Big Max pumpkin is a fun variety to grow with kids. Not only are they are the seeds edible, but the flesh is delicious and good in recipes. So. You want to start indoors about three to four weeks before the last frost. Direct sow after the last frost. <clears throat> days to germinate, seven to 14 days. Germination temperature is 66 uh, to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, 18 to 29 degrees Celsius. Days to maturity is 110 days. Plant spacing is six feet. And fruit size is 100 plus pounds. During the production... A turning your pump. Wait, does it say turning? Yeah, or is it? Yeah, turning your pumpkins while avoiding damage will ensure uh, symmetrical growth. Placing a barrier such as cardboard under the pumpkins as they begin to ripen also protects your fruit from environmental damage. Maturity will be reached once the pumpkin's color uh, deepens and loses its sheen. And the skin has hardened, <laughs> sorry. On a dry day after maturity is reached, use a sharp shears to sever the stems to harvest. Store in a cool, dark place. You want to uh, plant these about one inch deep. Um, you want to plant in a mound, and that's two to three uh, seeds in a mound. And you want to plant these in full sun. I mean, these things are just humongous, guys. Look at I mean, just look at the size of that freaking thing. Big Max, yeah, yeah. Mention putting what kind of candle would you put inside that for Halloween? For a, you know, just leave in the front yard. I mean, you can't put a small candle, right? Yeah, <laughs> candle in there. Need a lampshade, like a whole big lamp. <laughs> okay. Uh Hi. The Crenshaw Melon, which looks like it has some kind of weird alien creature on the inside. <laughs> Look at that face. Look how that's ugly. <laughs> sure. Um, the Crenshaw Melons are renowned for their extraordinary sweetness as a result of crossing a kebab. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to, I, either I'm losing my eyesight or these are really close together. For crossing a cassava melon with a cantaloupe. Oh. The juicy peach color flesh carries a delightful touch of peppery heat, oh. making it truly unique. You want to start it three weeks before the last frost. You want to direct sow it one to two weeks after the last frost. Um, days to germinate are seven to ten days. Germination temperature, 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 to 31 degrees Celsius. Um, days to maturity are 80 to 100 days. Plant spacing, 2 to 3 feet. And the fruit size gets about 6 to 8 pounds. Now, um, uh, harvest, signs to um, signify ripe fruit. This is where I always have problems with melons and all of that. Um the tendril uh, closest to the fruit will be dried up um, once the melons are close to ripeness. You will also notice a change in the rind color from the green to the dull orange. When they are ripe, the melon will come off the vine very easily. Um, you want to plant these about a half inch deep. Uh, you want to also plant these in a mound, about two to three seeds per mound. Uh, full sun, and they are a climber, so you can... Uh, put your trellises up, stuff like that. Make them climb. Use your bras and underwear to hold them in place. I tell you what, a <laughs> spicy little spicy heat. 
That's really interesting. I never knew a melon could have a little spiciness to it. Yeah. I wonder what it really tastes like. I might really have to try this now. Confuse everybody at the dinner table. Hey, we got dessert <laughs> with a little heat. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Hmm. For sure. Anybody in the chat, have you ever had this before? I'd like to know. This is that, That's really cool. I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. Rocky okay. Ford cantaloupe. Yep. Rocky Ford cantaloupe. Okay. Um, green fresh cantaloupe with delicious mellow flavors of clove and other warming spices. Its thin skins make this a, a rarity at stores, but a gardener's favorite. Plants will produce fruits that are around two to three pounds each, and vines will have four to five fruits each. You want to start these indoors about three weeks before the last frost. Direct sow one to two weeks after the last frost. Days to germinate are seven to ten days. Germination temperature 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 21 to 31 degrees Celsius. Days to maturity are 75 days. Plant spacing 12 to 36 inches. Fruit size is two to three pounds. And like most all, almost all uh, fruits that are like this, it says to signify the ripe fruit. The tendrils closest to the fruit will be dry upon the melons are, are close. That will tell you if the, it's close to ripeness. Um, you will also notice a change in rind color from a green to a dull gray or a yellow. When they are ripe, the melon will come off the vine really easily. Also, you want to plant these about a half inch deep. Um, plant in a mound, two to three seeds in a mound, and um, full sun, and they're also a climber. Hmm. Rocky for cantaloupe. Uh, welcome in. Uh, sifting some soil and more. Good to see you. And our Georgia's, uh, jo our Georgia Suburban Homestead said they tried it. And have you ever heard of chat masala? Uh, add that to your fruit for any spicy kick. Hmm. Hmm. So that was one before. So I, you know, I'm going to try this one too. I love cantaloupe. Me too. And now I know that it helps with your gut. Yeah. So um, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. Uh, Lucky Tiger tomato. Okay. It's an indeterminate. Um, this bicolor tomato with a green and yellow hues is a great little tomato for its bright and super sweet flavor. It is shaped, its shape is a bit more elongated than more petite size tomatoes, making it so unique. Enjoy in jams, jellies, salsas, and more. Um, start indoors six to eight weeks before the last frost. Days of germinate are five to 10 days. Um, germination temperature, 70 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 21 to 32 degrees Celsius. Days of maturity are 75 days. Plant spacing is 18 to 36 inches and fruit size is two to four ounces. Tomatoes become, <clears throat> I'm sorry, tomatoes come in a variety of colors. Therefore, we can learn to determine ripeness through the other senses. As tomatoes ripen, their colors become shiny. The weight of the fruit begins to increase while the firmness starts to give away. As tomatoes reach their peak ripeness, um, their aroma will become stronger, signaling that they are ready. Using clean shears to cut tomatoes from the stem, leaving the, um, I can't read that, pedestal, pedestal green top attached to the fruit. Um, it's an indeterminate tomato, and you want to plant this about a half inch deep. And um, you want to or half inch, ha one eighth inch deep, and um, a full sun for this particular tomato. Have you ever grown this before? No, no. Uh, I've done a Brad's Atomic Grape, which looks similar, but not mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I wonder if Brad's Atomic Grape has a, you know, is with this because it looks very similar, exactly what you just said with Brad's Atomic Grape. Yeah. Hmm, that's very interesting. So that is, uh, that's pretty interesting. So now we got the Jamaican yellow mushroom pepper. Ooh. I have grown this. I have grown this and it's a very abundant. Nice. Uh, I, this is a very good thing to grow. Okay. So the Jamaican yellow mushroom pepper, this um, citrusy fruity pepper is bright 
and hails from Jamaica. The pepper enjoys the sun and warmth. Its exterior scent is um, reminiscent of a yellow bell pepper. But do not be fooled as it is packed with spiciness inside. You want to start this about 8 to 10 weeks before the last frost. Days to germinate are 7 to 10 days. Germination temperature 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 to 32 degrees Celsius. Days of maturity are 85 to 100 days. Plant spacing, you want to plant these about 12 to 18 inches apart. Um, fruit size is about 2 to 3 inches. Um, this is hot, a very hot pepper. You want to grow, uh, put them in the ground about a fourth of an inch deep. They are container friendly and um, they do like full sun. To harvest peppers, use a sharp shears to cut the pepper stem um, from the plant to avoid plant damage. Once peppers mature to the specialized color, the fruit will become more tender, signalizing its ripeness. And the last one, the tropical sunset tomato. Look at the Ooh. beauty on that one. Boom. Boom. Very tropical. This might be actually something you could you could eat for a cherry. Maybe. Hmm. I'm always willing to try. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so this is the indeterminate a tropical sunset tomato is a bright bicolored variety with a perfect balance of sweetness and acidity. Um, golden with orangey pink stripes, a cherry size heirloom fruit will stay in the ripe in the ripe stage for a long time, providing a good shelf life. You want to start these indoors about six to eight weeks um, from the last frost. The days to germinate are 5 to 10 days. Germination temperature is 70 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 to 32 degrees Celsius. Days to maturity are 60 to 70 days. Plant spacing is 18 to 36 inches. And fruit size is 2 to 3 ounces. They are an indeterminate tomato. You want to plant these about 1 eighth of an inch deep. And it requires full sun. And like all tomatoes, um, come in a, they all come in a variety of different colors. Therefore, we all can learn to determine ripeness through other senses. As tomatoes ripen, their colors become shiny. The weight of the fruit begin to increase while the firmness starts to give away. As tomatoes reach their peak, ripeness and their aroma will become stronger, signaling they were ready. <clears throat> Using clean shears, cut the tomato from the stem leaving the pedestal at the top and um, attached attach to the green or attached to the fruit. So, yeah. So that is our tomatoes we're giving away today. And our Georgia Suburban Homestead just sent me a picture of Chat Marcel. Oh, cool. I've never heard of that before. Neat. And so you get Amazon. Nice. So thank you for sending that to me. I appreciate it. It's always good to learn something. It's like, whoa, this is pretty awesome. Welcome in Prepper 101. Janice Erfer is here. Poo Forest Permaculture, welcome in. It's so good to see you. So thank you guys for coming. So it's uh, 37 people in the chat. Just to let you know, after this live, we probably need about 780 hours we need, 800 hours we need to be monetized. Um, and thank you guys for watching our videos and uh, and uh, watching our channel. We, you know, every, all that little things. We appreciate it. And welcome in. Somebody just came in. Oh, Shawnee Shave just came on in. Okay. Welcome in, Shawnee. And if we miss, oh, and Serena just came in. Welcome in, Serena. Good to see you. Okay, it's trivia time. Trivia time. Or do we have? Giveaway tool. Is it trivia or a giveaway tool? <laughs> um, sorry. I do have a little bit of trivia, but we might have to do a little bit of both. <laughs> okay, let me get the other one set up first. <laughs> sorry. Um, so just hold on, guys. Okay, that is all set up. And you know what I could do after these seeds? I give some other seeds away, too. But they're going to be from Baker's Creek. Um, there we go. 
Let's see what I can give away today. Love in a mist. What do you think? We got love in a mist. Ooh. Sounds good. Okay, we'll give those away. Let me just get these set. Put one over here. Hey, Serena. Okay. So make sure we, if you guys win, uh, you've got to make sure you email me tonight, 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 not tomorrow, not the next day, tonight. Um, I don't want to be emailing by, email by tonight. You don't get the seats. Just because I don't have time to keep on going back and forth. I need to stuff. I have a chance to do it tonight. Get all this stuff in envelopes. When things get behind, I get real behind. Because when I look at my days, my days are 24-7 work, basically, with four or five hours sleep. When I have to do, I don't have time for anything else. So this is the time I have the chance to do it. It's right after the show. Uh, Vendro Lan is here. Welcome in. So, uh you know what? To get this stuff going, you know what? Let's give your que your questions first. Okay. So, okay. So the first winner is going to be Big Max. Okay. So the first question I have is: We talked about this earlier in the chat. Um, what exactly um, is cabbage good for? Medicinally. Boom, Juju B got it. Inflammation. Oh, well, you know what? That's going to be interesting with Juliana with that pumpkin. I mean, a whole air, the whole, <laughs> everybody where she's going to live is going to be walking around her yard because that's probably going to be in the front of her yard. And they'll be like, what the heck is that? <laughs> what is that thing? What is that, Juliana? <laughs> so, congratulations, Juju -ju -ju B. Stopping breast milk by Dapper Richardson. <laughs> okay, so we were joking earlier, but how many hot dogs are we really going to make you eat? You got five minutes for this question. No, you don't. <laughs> oh, we got a winner. That's what I got. Boom. Winner, winner. Congratulations, Steve's Garden Adventures. Okay. Take that one down. Next winner is going to win the Rocky Ford Cantaloupe. Ooh. What does Joe like to put on everything that his wife is allergic to? Everybody's like stumped. Coming <laughs> <laughs> a green stalker. Got it. Honey. Congratulations becoming a green stalker. Next, just let me know when you're done so I go to the other one. Another one in my head, so we're good. Lucky Tiger. This is awesome, guys. Okay, so what do you have to do to get your Brussels sprouts to come together? Uh, hold on. It, wait, because Jane popped in a bunch of stuff. I've believe it was juju b yeah i mean you don't top well you can top them you'll grow more but to get them to be more together you want to trim off all the stems all the all the way up so juju b got that question 
It's a sprouts party. Sorry, Susan. Next one is the Jamaican yellow mushroom. All right, you're going to have to do it because I ran out of questions. Okay. So here we go, guys. Good luck. What, what, what can we put in? Hmm. <laughs> Here's my giveaway tool. We're going to put hashtag... Cabbage. Bra. <laughs> Cabbage bra? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Enter it's in for, hashtag cabbage bra. It's for the Pollocks. <laughs> I think my husband just came home. Yay. I can let my screaming dog out. <laughs> yeah, he's he's excited. So this is for the Jamaican yellow mushroom. Oh, yeah, man. And it's it, you're going to get a lot of peppers off of that too. Lots of peppers. Yeah, any of the smaller peppers that you grow, you get a ton. Oh, you need the hashtag. I will give you another chance. Uh, put the hashtag in there. That's how you get on the board. Use the hashtag. Make sure you guys email me. There's 25. Another 30 more seconds. Okay. Here we go. That straw. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Mike Chaotic Guarding. Oh my God. Where are you at, Mike? I haven't seen you comment in a minute. Congratulations to Mike. And now we have. I can't, I can't say. Chaot, I just can't say it. Just Chaot. say Mike. I think, yeah, I can't say it. I, I don't know. CH is a, C, is a K, so chaotic. 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 There we go. There he is. I've been here. Um, oh. Tropical sunset. Ooh. So let's draw again. Tropical sunset sounds like a nice fruity drink on the beach. Oh, I think I erased it. Oh, no. No more cabbage bra? Let's see if it comes in. Let me see if it comes in because I ain't going to tell anybody the winner because I want you guys to see it. Well, I might have to do another one. Okay, hold on. There goes cabbage bra. <laughs> um, hashtag grow big. So it's going to be hashtag grow big. I don't know if you guys see it there yet. Oh, Wicked Shaw is here. Hey, if Billy. You, if you type in hashtag grow big, you can get on the wheel. On the, the, well, it's not a wheel. I don't know what it is. Giveaway tool. It's a tool. <laughs> we got a big tool. Built on a rock homestead. I'll give you another chance. Type in the hashtag first. Thank you guys for coming today. There's 39 people in the chat. Don't Thank forget, you guys, guys, we're also affiliated with Mary's Heirloom Seeds and MI Gardener. So if you go to MI Gardener, you can type in hashtag grow big. You have to use the hashtag and get 10% off. When you go with Mary's, if you type in grow big, you get 10% off. So just an FYI. Oh, there's Don't You Know. How you doing, Don't You Know? Good don't to you see you. Sandra living a full life is here. Good to see you. Hel Helena is here. Grow big, you have to type in, or grow big. 
Wickershire, you have to type in hashtag grow big to get on the wheel thingy. So the giveaway tool. So do that real quick so you can get on there to win. So Vendrel, Ven, Vendrel Land, he says pay it for to Billy if he wins. Ooh. Okay, here we go. Tropical sunset. Whoop. Oh, he did already. Okay, cool. I didn't see it, so sorry. I was just helping you. Just helping you out, Billy. Congratulations to Purple T-Bear. It didn't show on the screen. It's probably going to show in a second, maybe. Oh, okay. It oh, maybe it didn't. Oh, no. Oh, no. I could take a photo. <laughs> Let you guys know. I don't know why it didn't show up. That's weird. Hold on. I'll show you guys a picture. Congratulations, Purple. Oh. We got to make it work. Got to make it work. Sorry, guys. I don't know what happened. Let me uh, go back. You don't. You're not sharing a screen anymore. Either. Yeah, I didn't share it. It was my mistake. So let you guys see. There you Purple go. Purple T Bear one. Just let you guys know. Okay, now we're gonna give away. So we got those winners. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because I got to keep one myself. Seven winners will win Love in the Mist. Cool. Which is pretty cool. Okay. Let's see. Come on, come on. Love in the Mist. It sounds like an 80s song. <laughs> Let's use the word. Oh, today was 80s day with my son in school today. They had 80 oh, days. Oh, really? That's cool. And he, uh, I don't know what he even dressed up as. Dad, does this work? Does that, does this work? But he was all into it, which was really awesome. <laughs> good night, Howie. Love you, Howie. Take care, Howie. Have a good night. Um. Hashtag. Um, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Sprouts. Ooh, hashtag Sprouts starting now. Did that show up? Yeah. There they go. So I said seven. Love is in the air. <laughs> I knew it somewhere. <laughs> I know what the hell the song was. Is that Love a Love is in the air. <laughs> oh my God. I thought I heard White Snake sing that song. <laughs> so there's 20, uh, 27, 27 people. That was really fast. Good job, guys. That was awesome. Boom. Peace, Love, and Crochet with Deidre is here. And Laura Glepsy is here. Hashtag love is in the air. <laughs> we have to do it again. <laughs> I have to do it in something else. Oh, it's 9.34. Wow, we finished pretty fast today. Okay. Let's first draw. First draw. Let's check. Is Who's that a love the theme? Love. Happy Mag. Only if there's like a hot girl on a car somewhere, then it's a love boat theme. Because I said white snake. So. Jersey Twister. I keep buffering. Heard of it. I'm sorry. Jersey Twister. Speaking of twisters, if you guys had a twister lately, this wind has been crazy. That wind was absolutely nuts. Yeah. So congratulations, Jersey Twister. Okay, we're gonna do it again. Here we go. Oh, congratulations. You are the winners. What is it gonna be? Rick Ooh, won. Rick. Congratulations to Rick. Rick Thayen. <laughs> Rick. Congratulations to Rick. Rick is from Australia. 
and have no problem mailing my seeds out to anywhere. Just hopefully they don't get bounced <laughs> on the way there. Okay, here we go. Third winner. Boom. Mike won again. Oh my Mike's gosh, chaotic gardening. Mike must love our channel. <laughs> Why go anywhere else? Look at you. Mike's, Mike's chaotic gardening. Okay, I'm getting better at it. Now, if I could keep on saying it each time he's here. Okay, here we go. Lucky Got one more ones. Happy Mac. And just let you guys know on, uh, now I'm trying to, for the love of seeds on Facebook, every two weeks I'm giving out 10 packs of seeds. And right. they'll, they'll be from some company. They're not going to be from MI Gardener or Mary's Heirloom. They'll be from another company. But uh, every, 10, every two weeks I'll be giving out seeds over there. I'm trying to get a connection. I used to be connected a lot more to that site over there and, and try to bring some of the people over there over here. And some other people with us over there. It's a it's a it's a great uh, Facebook group. Here we go. Tammy won. Tammy Peach. And I said it right. <laughs> woof woof. Congratulations. Tammy Peach. Let's draw again. Email me at GardenStateGardener at Yahoo.com. Thank you for our mods today. Jane and you w. have to email him today. Right now. If not, you don't get the seeds. Congratulations to Purple Tea Bear. Congratulations, Purple Tea Bear. Double winner today. Double winner. And thank you, Jane Doe, for everything you're doing for us. We really appreciate it. Yep, thank you. You make life so much easier on us. Ginger Ninja. Aw. I'm so glad. So congratulations to Ginger Ninja. Let me get out of that. So, wow, that was pretty cool. I can't believe it's only 9.38. <laughs> well, I, guys, thank you for working with me with my schedule. Uh, yeah, Joey had his. Well, Joe, uh, we, can talk, we can talk about gardening till like 10 o'clock if you want, unless you're too tired. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. definitely. We have questions to ask. Um, let's just go over quick what we went over today quick. Um, if we're having a hot dog eating contest the Thursday before the Super Bowl, if you want in, make sure you message me. Winners will get a prize. Maybe the, whoever participates gets seeds. Uh, the thing is, we'll put eight. You got five minutes. Eight hot dogs. You finish eight hot dogs. You have to. T we have a timer going when you eat, and that's all you have to do. So it's kind of Super Bowl related, right? Eating a lot of hot dogs. <laughs> The hot dogs plain. Yeah, who's gonna eat? I I'm mean, just asking, you know, like, because I wouldn't eat a plain hot dog. That's disgusting. In fact, I don't think I could eat that many hot dogs. But do I mean? Do they have to have the full Monty, like ketchup, mustard, relish, or just ketchup? No, they, I mean, if I had a hot dog, I'm not eating it plain. I'm putting ketchup on it, you know, okay. and I'm making sure it's warm too. Nobody wants a cold hot dog. The most hot dogs I ever ate was 12, and it was a football orientation day in college, and uh, I made it to that. <laughs> so if you just want – you need no, you need a roll. You need a roll. You can't, you can't just have a hot dog. You need a roll. Hot dog and a roll. And if you can't it, be subret hot dogs or if you have a – a religious thinking can't eat sabret, then we'll go with something what you have. 
You can use a low carb tortilla. So, um, <laughs> I don't know how good that would taste, but oh my god, rolls. <laughs> I'm then out, <laughs> Joanna says. But it's something that even if somebody in your family, you know, so if you have a daughter that wants to get into it and try it out and be on camera eating hot dogs, you want a son or your uncle, you know, whatever you want. But you got to be there with them. If you're if your siblings with, you know, if King Poobah wants to get in a contest, he has to show himself on camera. And Courtney does too. Somebody in their channel. With their sibling has to be on at the same time. And you can't eat the same hot dogs and combine it, though. You can't do that. <laughs> but if we need to see, we want the people in the chat to be, hey, this is you. We want to promote your channel. Because part of this is promoting channels. So that gets pretty cool. Water, water makes the hot dog go down. Yep, yep, yep. But it's only eight hot dogs. We're not asking you 20. I know I could eat three. We can... 50. That's it. Just 50 ml. Oh I know I could eat four hot dogs within three or four minutes. <laughs> but what, what did he say? What did... Oh, my God. My wife yelled at me. You want a reason to pig out? <laughs> it's a contest. He wants to win a contest. He wants seeds. Seeds are... It's for life. <laughs> What is the price for the hot dog thing? You're going to get... It matters how many people are entered. We'll up the price to have how many people enter. If there's three people that entered, I'm not going to give a, a huge, huge, like a ninja or something. You know? So, so who... Yeah, you have... It's a five limit time limit no matter what. And we're not going to have you wait two hours to eat hot dogs. And keep on going. So there's going to be a five-minute time limit. Okay, so the winner's going to get about ten bras to hang up their melons in the in the uh, garden. <laughs> Who wants to crochet eight bras? <laughs> yeah, you want to? It'd be a nice and soft bra. Melon. Make sure it's, gotta make sure use yarn that's nice and soft. I love a good melon it. holder. <laughs> Oh, I thought that was gonna Billy was gonna say, is that for OnlyFans only or something? But <laughs> I read that wrong. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. What about those hot dog toasters? You ever see those? Where you put the hot dog in and you push the button and yeah, that's a good idea, purple. A that hot is a dog good idea. It all depends on how many people enter. Like like he said, we're not gonna give away um you know a bunch of stuff if people aren't gonna enter, so so please let me know. We'll have a. I'll have something out by the weekend, and it's going to be something you're all in, and uh, we'll go from there. I guess it's only two or three weeks away, and the other contests we're going to have. Oh, oh, but first, you know, there's seeds you could buy somewhere. Well, you could buy them at and my gardener or Mary's heirloom seeds, and well, Mary's heirloom seeds. <gasps> If you get 10% off if you use the word grow big. And you know what? It really helps us out a lot. And and my gardener. 10% <gasps> off there too. Hashtag grow big. And you get 10% off. And free shipping over there is and my gardener is $18, I think. And Maris Here Loom Seeds, it's $20 for free shipping. So gotta love that. So check out those two affiliates. So our six contests we are having during the growing season. The first one we're going to have is the watermelon radish. And all oh, you have to do is... Like watermelon crawl. I'm like, I have to drink in order to do that. <laughs> and, there's a drink. <laughs> and, with, and with the watermelon radish, you have to weigh it. And it cannot split. If it splits, you're out. You're out! So that's the first contest. The second contest is the Detroit Red Beet. So go get these seeds, guys. Go buy them. And same thing. It's the biggest Detroit Red Beet. Put it on a scale. It cannot split. And that, there you go. Our third contest is zucchini. Who could grow the longest zucchini? If it starts turning color, you're like, you're not going to eat it. 
uh, you're disqualified. You're out. So who could grow the longest, longest zucchini? And we'll have dates for everything. You got to make three videos showing you starting a seed, the middle, and an end. And we'll come up with a hashtag for the contest. The reason why you do a hashtag, because we can see your video right away if you used hashtag grow big zucchini, hashtag grow big uh, watermelon radish, for example. Our next challenge will be the Peter Pepper. Why the Peter Pepper? Because there's no other such thing as another Peter Pepper. <laughs> so we want to make sure that you're growing the correct variety. Um, and I do have some extra seeds somewhere. So if you cannot find it, Peter Pepper, let me know. And I'll try to get those out to you. Um, our you next contest will be the Mammoth Sunflower. With the uh, mammoth sunflower, it's going to be how this will be the width of it. Our next contest after that will be the Dr. Riggi, Waichi tomato, and that's also a weight. Righteous. 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 Richie Righteous. <laughs> not, not Wedgie. Not Wedgie. No Dr. <laughs> Wedgie. <laughs> no Dr. Wedgie. Dr. And Wedgie. It's the new tomato. Again, three videos will be in each contest. Each contest, you win $100. And uh, boom. And whoop. Serena had a question. Do salvia seeds require cold uh, stratification to germinate? Yes. Serena, yes. <laughs> Actually, I didn't know that question. And I would have found out for you right after the live. And if anybody has any questions, always feel free. So that's the six contests. The watermelon radish, Peter Pepper, Ma Mammoth Sunflower, Detroit Red Beet, Dr. Riggi, or YG, or Riggi, or not Wedgie, but White just <laughs> tomato and a zucchini. And they got the hot dog eating contest. And we're going to have right after the uh, hot dog eating contest, this will be all on Thursdays. Oh, we do have an interview lined up in there too, which is really cool. It's how to make a profit on a farm, uh, and which is really cool. Um, it's, it's, it deals with sustainability. Um, that's going to be an awesome live because we're going to talk a lot about chickens. And, uh, you know, a lot of people here, you want to make money. Well, it's nice to have $20,000 extra in your pocket right now, right? So see what he has to say. It's a great topic, but we'll talk about that in another live. Let's see. Anything else? Okay, question time. So we got about 12 minutes. If anybody, if you guys are free, watch some of our past videos. We appreciate it. Leave a comment. And we appreciate that. Um, ask us anything. Thank you so much, Jean. Jean. Yes. Nicole said it has a very Suggestive shape, Heidi. The Peter Pepper does. It's just super wrinkly. Well, I'll definitely have to show a video of it now. <laughs> I mean, a big. Um, well, no, Dee, has... I cannot help you there. If you forgot the question, how am I supposed to help? <laughs> now, here's some pics of a Peter Pepper, just to let you guys know. It's quite the shape. Um, yep, it's quite the shape. Um, they can go up to about three to four inches long. <laughs> but if you could grow larger, that's great. Comes red, yellow. I don't think, I don't think you can grow it any larger. It's okay. <laughs> but I mean, a shape of that Peter Pepper is. <laughs> this is this is making me very uncomfortable. <laughs> it's, it's, a very interesting, very interesting uh, pepper, hot pepper that is. It's a little hotter than a jalapeno. <laughs> it's a look, an orange Peter Pepper. <laughs> so, you know, s size matters for some people. A larger pepper might be better than a smaller pepper. Oh, 
Fear God. So it has more flavor, they say. So that is what a well, Peter you, Pepper It's looks a like. grower and a shower because it's a competition. So you have to grow and show. It doesn't come in pink. No, only those three colors. And as D said, <laughs> Betty. <laughs> wow. And it's it's definitely something you should put in the front yard with the fun tomato. <laughs> wow. And uh Jija Juby showed that in our yard last year. And everybody's was in for quite a surprise. <laughs> Let me show you what the fun tomato looks like, just for since I'm talking about it. It's definitely kind of shower. Hopefully this comes up. Yes, I saw the joke, Serena. Yes. Oh, you tomato love, fun. Well, I'm so glad you like the orange ones, David Gray. <laughs> so colorful. I plan on growing all three. And Juliana said she then demanded we grow it on a front porch so we could show the mailman. Oh, so nice. Okay, so, yeah, you can grow them, you can use them, you can dehydrate them, stuff like that. So you can add them to tacos and all different kinds of stuff. They are a hot pepper, mm -hmm. but they're not extremely hot. They're just a little bit hotter than a jalapeno. Now, this is the tomato fun. It's quite a cigar shape. <laughs> So you grow that with your Peter Pepper and everybody thinks you have a weird deformed garden filled with body parts. That's quite the, it's a little larger than a Peter Pepper. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's tomato fun. Uh, D, you definitely want to cover. I mean, they, they will, they will survive a little bit of frost. They'll just survive a little bit of snow. Snow is way different than a frost, by the way. Um, but you definitely want to cover them. 17 degrees is like, that's pushing it. Yeah, definitely. Serena goes, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> we were talking about hoes earlier. You missed it. <laughs> oh, oh, you forgot the other one too. The other one had a nipple. The DeBarro tomato has a nipple. That's an interesting shape. Yeah, Judge Juby, I had the naughty. I last year I gave away. I had monthly seeds, and uh, for a very cheap price, and I had the adult addiction. But I also had the kids addiction, uh, uh, addiction too, where I had a uh, um, let me see, Mickey Mouse tomato. I had the uh, uh, the Smurfs tomato. A whole bunch of different things now. Kids version, kids version, not the adults version. And Rick said, I remembered that naughty tomato. Food porn. No, it's no food popcorn. Nope. Yeah, there is a contest for a tomato, but we haven't figured out what tomato we want to use. Oh, yeah, we did. Dr. Yeah, Dr. Dr. Yeah. I'm sorry, my brain is not with it. Dr. Weiches or Weiches. You want to use that one? Let me uh, look that up. Uh, let me see. Mary Sherloom Seeds. Uh, it's not coming up. Show you, I'll show you guys a picture of that tomato. So that's... Uh, Dr. Wychie or Ridgie tomato. Dr. Wedgie. Yeah. Dr. Wedgie. So that's what the tomato looks like, which is less like a lot less acid in the tomato, which is pretty cool. Just looking at some of this. So pretty cool tomato. All right. Dr. Wedgie's already. Oh, that's what Betty. Quirky, you forgot Dr. Wedgie's already. That's what Betty Barnes said. Um, guys, we do. We want to do a lot of different things on our site. We want you to make sure you guys have fun. 
and get a laugh every single time, learn a lot, great relationships, um, all those little things. I mean, there's people that become family after a while, and uh, you know, all comes from trust becoming family. Gargamel, that's it. And we had Snow White Tomato, too. Um, Deborah Richardson just came in. She said, interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. So a lot of... Did you ever try those Batman tomatoes? Oh, I forgot. Mm -mm. There's so many tomatoes I have. Uh, yes, my Renaissance grandma. I know she's been in here, but she, that's the first comment I've seen in a while, so I had to make a news report out of it. And it's good to see my Renaissance grandma. <laughs> she has so much knowledge. I love it. Wow. Any other questions, guys? So our next show will be on Tuesday, but we're also going to be on Sunday Fun Day. The registration video is already out. And so I hope you guys are learning a lot about Quirky and those videos. And I can see it in the comments when people are talking about your garden. that like You can tell they never checked out your channel. So it's awesome that everybody's learning about Quirky. Um, absolutely love it. Chipper66, welcome in. Um, you know what? I still want to do another giveaway. <laughs> You guys are still here, which is awesome. Hi, Chipper. Let me see what else I can give out quick. You know, I still have tons of these from last time. Oh, thanks. Let me Sorry. give out something different. Hold on, guys. Oh, thanks, Rick. I work really hard in my garden. It's something I super, 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 super enjoy. Now I feel like a cedaholic, though. I feel like this time of year, I just like, I don't know what it is, man. I uh, I was like, oh, seeds. I still need to get the mashed potato squash. Like, I haven't got that yet. But my Lord, man. So what we're going to give up, we're going to give four more winners out. I'm trying to give flowers away, guys, So because oh. I have them right next to me. It's This is really cool looking. So, ooh, peppermint stick. Oh, I've never even heard of that. That's cool. So I'm gonna give out four peppermint sticks. So let me uh, get set up here because I wasn't expecting to give this out. Thirty-one people in the chat. Yeah, it's a good addiction. Yeah, I have addiction, a seed addiction to giving too many seeds out, <laughs> which is good. I want people to grow. I Joe down sometimes because he has such a big heart. I'm like, Joe, you just I want to give, get it. give, give, give. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, uh, I need to be stopped. I need to be stopped. But if I see you guys grow stuff, that means the world to me. Oh, for sure. It's so cool when I, I do need to stop. Tags you in something like, hey, I got these seeds back in January. It's June. And look, look at this. Look at this. I'm growing this. Can you believe it? That's that's cool. So let me seed know if you guys addict. see that. I'm the seed addict and he's the seed slinger. <laughs> King Slayer. <laughs> oh, what? oh Lord. Hey, Arqua, man. Thanks for coming in. Good to see you, dude. Do you see that or no? I have to... Let me get out. No, you have to share it. Okay, I didn't share it. Okay, hold on, guys. Well, thanks for sharing my little bitty channel out. I appreciate it. So make sure you register for Sunday, guys. Sunday starts at 7 o'clock. Oh, so the it's the hashtag is King Poobah? For reals? For real. King Poobah is Quirky's husband. So type in hashtag King Puba. There you go. The entry is starting to pop up. Right after this is this is finished because I got to take my son to 
the store get something to drink. <laughs> and we have nothing for inside the house for tomorrow, so. There we go. It's starting to go, starting to raise up above 20, 21, 22, 23. So uh, we'll find out next day or so who's going to be interviewed on Sunday, fun day. And uh, we got some good stuff coming, guys. I'm telling you, you guys are going to love it. Our interviews are uh, – nobody has these interviews every single week, that's for sure. Um, and we're just excited. And we're hoping to be monetized by my birthday. So if you guys could do that, that's great. My birthday is January 24th. So my wife's is January 23rd. I'm January 24th. And Joey's January 27th. It's birthday week. We're done. We're gone. Okay, here we go. Four winners. <coughs> oh, boy. First winner. Sift in some soil and more. That's our first winner. Second winner. Casings 55. Third winner. Make sure you guys email me. David Gray. And the last winner of the night. Serena. So congratulations to all the winners tonight. Congratulations. Now, one thing, guys, we're, we are not a channel that's a giveaway channel. I just want to let you guys know, like, hey, what do you do, Lord? Like, what, what's our channel about? I'm hoping you guys, the first thing you say, well, we learn a heck of a lot. We have a good time. But we learn a heck of a lot. Uh, we have great interviews. Um, that's what we want to be known for. Not, oh, they're a giveaway channel. No, 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 no. I don't want to. I don't want to. What, Serena, you won this. What we just went over. So make sure you email me. There's an address by Jane Doe, Garden State Garden at Yahoo.com. Give me your address and boom. And you got to tell me exactly what you want. Because I look at your email, I go to the envelope, I put them in a BAM, and I'm done. So that was, yeah, email me tonight. Thank you, Corky. So um, go check out the subscription video if you haven't watched it yet. Go watch that. And uh, leave a comment you guys put on the wheel. Because Sunday we use the wheel. We don't use this tool. We use the wheel. And we'll have some interviews. And, um, yeah, let's get us monetized by January 24th. That'd be a good birthday present. Yeah. And uh, we appreciate uh, sifting some soil. Did I win peppers? Um, let me see. If you guys forgot what you won, make sure you go back and watch the video. <laughs> How many hours did you say that we have left? Uh, after tonight will be like 780, 790, I'm guessing. Okay. So um, let me see. Sifting some soil and more. No, you didn't want peppers. Oh, sift in some soil. You want a peppermint stick. This is what you want, sift in some soil. So the four people that want a peppermint stick was sift in some soil more, Casings 55, David Gray, and Serena. Does it smell like peppermint stick, I wonder? Nope. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just by the look, I guess. I have no idea. I have no idea. Yes, you want peppermint sticks, Serena. In case it's 55, you want you want peppermint stick. Let me show you guys again. Hmm. I've never heard of that ever, so now I'm curious. Single blooms really make a beautiful statement in your garden. Which is That's pretty what I like is a statement. A statement. That's why I'm gonna grow Peter Pepper. <laughs> yeah, I'm it's a showcase. Make, yeah, I'm gonna showcase it, make a statement. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you guys everyone for coming. We appreciate it. And I'll, we'll see you on Sunday fun day. Check out some of our past videos. I like, share, subscribe. Go buy some seeds from my gardener. And Mary's heirloom seeds. Use those codes. Those codes are most important. And we'll see you guys Sunday. Take care, everyone. Bye, y'all.